guitar systems. Um, I just got it today actually and um, they wanted me to review it so uh, I thought I would give you my unadulterated honest opinion. Okay so no kidding at first I was very apprehensive about doing this kind of a review because I was like you know this is probably going to be another one of those products that it's going to mess up my tone, you know, or something. And, of course, this is what they sent over. And then there's a receiver, you know, that's plugged into one of my uh, overdrive pedals. And a little tiny cord is plugged into my uh, GP10. And that USB is into my uh, laptop. You know, all the reviews that I've seen and the, the, you know, I understand there's a lot of competing going on in different uh, uh, a a product avenues and things like that. Um, honestly, I'm very, very surprised at how much I like it. <laughs> um, so I was doing a little bit of research and let's cut to that clip now. Um, so according to Shure, you know, the people that make the microphones and stuff, um, you know, talking about will will a wireless system color your tone so it says analog wireless systems need to compress the dynamic range of audio before it can be carried on a radio wave okay so it is compressed in the transmitter expanded in the receiver and this process is known as companding okay um so this particular unit that I'm, I'm playing with in this video. Um, I think that it does do some companding, obviously, but um, whereas some people might think it affects what they're trying to do negatively, I think it's actually improving some aspect of the um, the response for a certain type of playing, um, perhaps. So it's kind of like getting a free compressor. <laughs> Um, which, you know, to my ears and my fingers, it almost kind of feels like it's balancing out the signal a little bit. So, yeah, anyway, um, you know, a little bit of natural compression takes place when you transmit a wireless signal 
right? Um, compounding, they call it. So, um, you know, it kind of, um, it's like getting a free compressor. <laughs> you know, it, it gives you just a little bit of compression. I feel like it actually assists a little bit for tapping, at least on, yeah. So, you know, even if you don't plan on using one of these as your main thing, I think that it's good to have something like this. You could just throw it in a bag, throw it in your case, and you have a really compact backup that's going to do the job and um, <clears throat> takes up very little space, you know. Could save the day, you know, in, in that kind of scenario. I'm also probably going to plug this into my um, Akai drum kit for finger drumming just to demonstrate a little bit of stuff with that too that you can use it like that as well um, so yeah um, let's go ahead and uh, go to a clip here of me playing some stuff um, various things and I think after that we'll do like a, a little frequency analysis video um, where I like actually record a couple of different side-by-side -side, uh, examples and then show you the um, frequency analysis. So yep, yeah, let's go ahead and listen to some clips of this thing.
right, so what I've done here is record two little samples of me playing some uh, tapping figures, and it's just basically C minor 7, B flat minor 7, A flat major 7, A flat minor 7, G flat minor 7, and E major 7 with a little right-handed arpeggiated figure on each of those chords descending. It goes up first, down, up, down. Yeah. Um, and I did one with the cable and I did one with the U2 and it's exactly the same thing. I didn't record it to a click but there, it's the same notes. So uh, I thought we'd just go ahead and listen to the cable first. Alright, so let's listen to the wireless now. Alright, so as you can tell, they're pretty close. Um, I actually took the time to do frequency analysis on both of them. And uh, the one on the left, of course, is the cable. The one on the right is the wireless. And as you can see, there's like a little discrepancy. Largely everything from 1000 hertz up is more or less kind of the same but if you look between about well from about 200 to 300 Hertz it's more or less the same like rising wedge but then when you get to 300 Hertz to like 500 maybe a little beyond that, the um, the wireless kind of has more of a plateau. So that's interesting because I do notice that it has a different feel uh, on, my, on my fingers. You may not be able to hear it as well, but there's something that's happening um, that it's doing that's causing a different type of frequency compression which affects your fingers, especially the tapping. Um, so I pulled up this um, little infographic thing from uh, Audio Spectrum, like Teach Me Audio, or whatever, um, and it kind of just explains the frequency bands, right? So there you go. All of these are pretty much the same, but we get to the the low mid range, right? Um, and the, it says the low mid-range contains the low order of harmonics of most instruments and is generally viewed as the bass presence range. Okay, it's like boosting a signal at 300 adds clarity to the lower string instrument. There you go. <clears throat> so, um... I would say that, that it is kind of adding a little bit of clarity. Um, maybe it's the cable. Um, you know, I'm, I'm thinking of the wrong type of fidelity or something like that. Because it's just kind of a standard guitar cable you buy for like $25. It's like a 10-footer. But with the tapping specifically, and also the finger style way that I play, um, it actually does... Um, It, it seems to even things out. Um, I hate to, I hate to like promote something like that um, in sort of a desultory fashion, but um, you're not going to hear it as much. But I'm telling you, when I when I've just tested it out today, it seems like there's something that's happening with the I guess what you would call the haptic feedback loop 
um, of how it responds to your finger pressure when you're tapping. Mm -hmm.